salvation, the archangel Gabriel was sent to Zechariah the priest in the holy temple to announce the birth of John the forerunner. Prepare us to celebrate your birth, which is filled with blessings, that we may glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who sent his angel to the temple to announce the good tidings to Zechariah, and to the Son who revealed his birth through the birth of John, his forerunner, and to the Holy Spirit who sanctified John while he was yet in his mother's womb. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O hidden Son, who are beyond our understanding. You are the light who enlightens all people, and you became man in order to save us. O Son of Justice, because the world was unable to see you, you sent John as a lamp, so that we may see you when you come to us. This day we celebrate the feast of the announcement to Zechariah, when Gabriel was sent to bring the good news to him as he offered incense. When he did not believe the angel's words, you tested him and made him mute, so that he might open his heart to this sign. Now, Lord, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to answer our prayers as you answered the prayer of Zechariah. Grant us an understanding of your plan of salvation. Forgive all our sins, bring back those who are far, protect those who are near, and grant rest to our departed, so that with them we may raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Heavenly High Priest, you are the joy of angels and of all people. Receive our incense and answer our prayers. Grant peace to the world, holiness to priests, purity to deacons, forgiveness to sinners, and rest to the departed, that we may glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. and his heart could not believe. He was filled with great wonder, could his barren wife conceive. Praise the Lord who has chosen John to go prepare. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. But Glory to the Lord of all of the apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For if those who adhere to the law are the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law produces wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, Thus shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body as already dead, for he was almost a hundred years old and the dead womb of Sarah. He did not doubt God's promise in unbelief. Rather, he was empowered by faith and gave glory to God and was fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to do. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. But it was not for him alone that it was written that it was credited to him. It was also for us 
to whom it will be credited, who believe in the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was raised over, over for our transgressions and was raised for our justification. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, and just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you O oh, most excellent Theophilus, in order that you may realize the certainty of the teachings that you have received. In the days of Herod, the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abia, and his wife was from among the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren and both were now advanced in years. And once when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord in order to burn the incense. And then, while the entire assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink, 
and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he shall turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah in order to turn the hearts of the fathers towards the children and the disobedient to the understanding of the just in order that he prepare a people who are fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know these things? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel who stand before God and I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you these good tidings. But now you shall be speechless and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in their proper time. And meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were amazed that he remained so long in the holy place. But even when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the holy place. And he was gesturing to them, but he remained mute. And then when his days of ministry had been completed, he went home. And after this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, Thus has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace from before others. This is the truth, peace be with you. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. So this morning what I'd like to do is talk about the mystery on this first week of the announcements of Zechariah, and then take an application from it for our own spiritual lives. Now at the time of our Lord, there were thousands of priests who are descendants of Aaron. And all around the temple, so you've all seen pictures of Jerusalem and the Esplanade, and on top you have the Mosque of Omar or the Dome of the Rock, whatever you want to call it. This is where the temple used to be. But all along the foundations around the whole, you had all of these, essentially, offices and shop fronts all over and staircases coming down, and the place would have been swarmed with people continually every day. The sons of Aaron are to this day one of the most self-same identical genetic group of people on the face of the earth. You'll notice in the gospel it says that Zechariah, and his name, by the way, means Zachar Yah, means God has remembered. God is mindful. So the very name that he has given is part of the lesson that God does not forget us. And we're also told that his wife was a daughter of Aaron, that the priests were to marry. Not every Levite was a priest of the tribe of Levi, but every priest was a Levite of the tribe of Levi. And so there, at the time of our Lord, there were probably about 9,000 Levites 
and about 7,000 priests. Now, obviously, all 7,000 of them don't work at the temple every day. And this is why you have in this gospel today, it talks about their divisions of ministry, their divisions. You find it in the first book of Chronicles, chapter 24. And there are 24 divisions. And so we're told that of one of the groups, Zechariah belongs to the division of Abia. Now, when you would see all these temple fronts, a number of the priests, each of the families, of course, the priests lived from the temple. When the people of Israel entered into the promised land, the Levites were given no land. That tribe of Levi was given nothing. They had towns, but their towns are scattered all throughout the other 11 tribes. And God said, because Levi belongs to me, he is my son, and I am his portion, and he is my portion. And so they didn't receive a portion of the land of the promised land, but they were scattered all throughout all 11 of the tribes, and they lived from the sacrifices and the offerings that were brought to the temple. But as it says in the gospel, these would be on rotation of who's serving at the temple itself. And so it says that his division is up. And remember, he's an old man. This may be actually the only time in his life that he's actually offered inside the temple the incense, even though he says that he's old. So the rotation that would go through. But another part that's fascinating, and then we're told that the vision was serving at the temple, but then you had casting of lots, just random lottery. Who's going to do the morning offering of the incense? Who's going to do the evening offering of the incense? Who's going to be the sacrificing of the animals on the altar that's outside in front of the temple? So this, is a huge, this was a huge institution that was going on. And we're told about Abiya. And this is a fascinating little detail because all of these little shops that are around, these families, each of the priestly divisions would have different things they would do for the temple, even when they weren't serving up above in the temple building itself. And the division of Abia would have run at least one, if not a number of these little shops, these little storefronts. Because if you read the Old Testament, it becomes very clear. Everything you bring to the temple has to be without blemish and perfect. And so what all of these, these thousands of priestly families did for their occupation was they verified what you were bringing. The oil you brought, the flour you brought, the animals you brought, the goats you brought, the sheep you brought, all of these things were being taken care of by the different families. And what's fascinating is the tribe, uh, the, the division of Abia, their specific function was to verify the unblemishedness of the lambs that were brought to the temple. So if you were doing a sacrifice for whatever reason and you're bringing a lamb, you'd have to go into one of these shops see one of the priests who is there, he'd look over your animal, he'd give you a token that the animal is good to go, because the priests in the temple are just doing the sacrifices that are non-stop all day long. And so they're not examining the animals, the animals have to be examined beforehand to make sure that they're worthy of the temple of God. So this is a fascinating thing because by the fact that Zechariah belongs to the division that examines the lambs for the sacrifice on the altar, his son, John, is the one who points out, behold, the Lamb of God. So that you see the connection of what John does in his preaching 30 years later, connected with the very office of his priesthood by belonging to the division of Abia. It's a fascinating little detail. So in other words, John being the last of the prophets of the Old Testament, pointing out the Messiah, is also bringing to fulfillment the entire ministry of the Levitical priesthood, of the division of Abia, to point out the unblemished lamb of sacrifice. And so Zechariah, we have this episode, they live in a place called Ayin Karim. And there are two locations that are there. One is the Church of the Visitation. One is the Church of the Nativity of John the Baptist. It's very likely that they had two different places. One outside the village and one inside the village. You go one for the summertime, it's their camp. 
And so you have this aspect of Zechariah's life. Now, when we look at the details that come up then of Zechariah and his spiritual life, it's important for us to see because we're always confronted with temptation. Not nonstop, but our lives will have on a fairly regular level things that we are tempted to do which are deficient. Some things which are just downright sinful, but things that are always trying to get us to go on detours away from serving the Lord in fidelity, to serve the Lord unblemishedly. And so when we remember this individual, Zachariah, Zachariah, that God remembers, the very first thing the angel says to him is, do not be afraid, your prayer has been heard. Now when we consider how we're told very clearly that Elizabeth and Zachariah are not just simply of the priestly families, but they're very faithful. Well, it doesn't necessarily correspond. You'd like to have it always correspond, but it doesn't always necessarily correspond. So we're told that during this entire lifetime of their married life, of no child, no one to pass on their heritage to. And as Elizabeth says later on in the gospel today, she says that this is the way that God decided to take away my disgrace. My disgrace in the sense of my sadness as a mother who has no children, as a wife who has no children, but also her disgrace before others because infertility was always considered to be a lack of blessing where there's no children, no life. And so Elizabeth kind of puts it all in a nutshell in the end when she goes into her five months of seclusion. And of course, as you know, this is where the Blessed Virgin Mary is going to find her during those last months. So this is a woman who has received with great equanimity this child with gratitude and to recognize that this is the path of God. Zechariah is just stunned by this. And so he doesn't know at first. In fact, you see in the bulletin that the translation from our Peshitas, it says, fear fell upon him. This man is floored. I suppose each of us would be floored if in the middle of your occupation, because you have to remember, he's standing in front of the, the curtain that separated the holy place from the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, where nobody went in except only the high priest and only once a year. So he's already in a place that all Jews would have seen with the utmost sense of awe. And in front of him would have been the golden table that would have 12 loaves of bread, big pita breads, representing the 12 tribes. And you put down four and then you have incense and then you put down four and then you have incense and you put down four more and you put incense on top. And every morning that was refreshed before the curtain. It represented the people of Israel before God, before the face of God, the Holy of Holies. And then near this would have been a golden covered table also, which was the altar of incense. And it's at the side and then off to the side would have been the menorah, the seven branch candlestick. And within this space then is where the angel Gabriel appears. Off to the right hand of the altar, which means it's the left hand. Zechariah would have been standing before the altar, before the curtain. So the moment is already, and as I say, maybe the only occasion this week, the only occasion in his entire life that he would be within the temple. And so when the angel Gabriel appears, this is overwhelming to him. This is often the way grace enters into our lives. Grace doesn't usually come gently into our lives. And especially when God truly desires to transform us into the sacred heart, to bring us into holiness, because all grace is about union with God. Grace is not therapeutic. It's therapeutic because it has to be for the sake of union with God. But Christianity is about union with God, of virtue and of holiness and transcendence. And because of our sins and our wounds and everything else we carry within us and all the effects of original sin, that has to be healed. So there is an aspect that is therapeutic, but its purpose is not therapeutic. Its purpose is union with the unseen, union with God. And so that when grace comes and the greater the grace that God gives to us, it sometimes is quite violent. You all know the story of Saul's conversion outside of Damascus, being thrown off the horse. 
And we see with the saints that God is not gentle with them. He loves them from all eternity, but he's not gentle. Zachariah, the man whose name is called God has remembered you, apparently God forgot them for decades with no children. That's what a sinner would think. Well, God hasn't given me these things. What's the purpose? We do all these prayers. I don't get what I want. That's the way normal human nature functions before providence. But the saints, Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, she says this was the manner that God chose to do this. Decades. Decades in the workings. Decades of our humiliation as far as human beings were concerned. Decades of prayer. But you'll notice that what the angel Gabriel says to Zechariah is your prayer, singular, your prayer has been heard. That aspect, when our Lord says, you must pound on the door and knock, and knock, and knock, and knock, and it will be open to you. It may be decades. That's what this story really teaches us. By nature, we are so impatient. Right? We want things to be done the way we want them to be done, and we want them done that way yesterday. And when it doesn't work that way, then we question God. Why am I in pain? Why do I have to live in disappointment? Why is this temptation constantly weighing me down? And instead of looking to see what God is actually trying to teach us, our natural default reaction is to kick against it all. So Zachariah and Elizabeth give us an example of a perseverance always being faithful. We're told blamelessly, they follow all the law of God, they follow the law of Moses, they are observant, they follow all the ordinances without blame. So that's our first lesson of just persevering. It's hard to be Catholic when you're 10, we get kind of confused at 10, but you know, and then it's definitely hard when we're 20. 40? different temptations, but it's still not easy. Maybe if you've hammered it out for those four decades, maybe when we're in our 60s, we kind of cruise along by good habits and the pursuit of virtue because we've worked out most of the bugs, one hopes, by that time. But then in the time, that is the period when the Lord desires to pull us into the blinding light. And the pain that we suffer is perhaps not, you know, gross sins like when we're 20, but they will still be temptations. And the light will be even more blinding at 65 than it will be at 15. Because at 65, in theory, you're actually better disposed to see this brilliance and the union with God. And hence the words of Elizabeth. This is how God desired to take away our disgrace. So it's a very beautiful thing. But the last idea I want to leave you with is stop and consider how close these people were to God throughout their whole lives. And consider how he left them in darkness for so long. As you get closer to God, it doesn't mean things become easier. On the contrary, when you read St. Paul's life, when you read the lives and you know the stories of the apostles, every one of those men who were most faithful in the first generation, all were murdered. They're all martyred. When the missionaries would enter into countries, the first generation inevitably were all martyred. And the second generation would come a number of years later and then the children of those people who killed the previous one said, oh, okay, well, let's listen to this now. When I was teaching at the seminary, there was a young man who was there from Papua New Guinea. He was Catholic, he was born Catholic. His parents were Catholic, but his parents were converts. So without guile, he would just say, Papua New Guinea, he said, you're my grandfather? My grandfather was one of those cannibals. It's just, so the first generation that met the cannibals, they get martyred and, well, eaten. The second generation does better, and the third generation, the grandchild, well, he's studying for the priesthood. That's how you bring the gospel to the world. We must never think that the salvation of souls of the people that we come in contact is going to be easy. 
And clearly when we read the lives of the saints, which is why I always encourage you to read the lives of the saints and to read spiritual reading, you need to know how the grace of God works in the lives of these people. And close down YouTube and find books, pieces of paper, you know, things that smell like dust. And go back to it. There's no pop-ups. There's no distractions. And the book will tell you the same thing it told you last year. They are the most faithful of friends. God only knows what happens to your TikTok videos from year to year, or from month to month, let alone year to year. But with the saints, they teach us that the closer we arrive in God, the more blinding grace is. And that is a blessed thing, because it's telling us that actually we are arriving closer to the union with God. And this is why when Zechariah says, how shall I know these things? He believes fundamentally He's a good man, he's a saint, but he has his own expectations. And of course, the idea that we're going to have a child now, they're probably in their late 60s, maybe in their early 70s, we don't know. But he asks basically for a sign. How will I know this? And the angel says, this is going to happen in its time. But because you have not believed and you want a sign, this will be the sign. You will be mute. And apparently also deaf. Because of the birth, the birth of John the Baptist, he's clearly stammering and also not able to hear. Because they have to make signs to him at the birth of John. So for the next nine months, he's going to be in this state. Doesn't stop him from doing his job faithfully, because we told he continues to do the work the rest of that week. Then after his turn is done, then he goes home. So he becomes the living sign. So you see it in the gospel, and if you notice it in the Husoyo, it talks about the blessedness of his mute muteness, because that was to open his heart to the signs of God. The very thing that would seem to us to be a punishment was actually God's vehicle to open his heart to what God is truly trying to communicate. So when we look at Zachary and Elizabeth, the thing that we have to ask for their intercession today, first of all, is patience. God took 15 centuries to prepare Israel for the coming of the Messiah. Surely our piddly little 80 years, 90 years on the face of this earth is insignificant compared to that. God has time. God is eternal. God is outside of time. So the first thing is, he's definitely going to teach us. The question becomes is, am I able to listen? So the first grace we ask for is patience. The second grace we ask of Zachariah and Elizabeth to obtain for us is wisdom. Wisdom is the ability by seeing the goal to put all the things in order towards that goal. Wisdom is not a major quality in the modern world characteristic. We want the immediate. We want quick. Wisdom sees the long game and knows how to see what the program is and to put everything in order towards that end. So the second grace we ask for is wisdom. And then finally, the grace that we ask of Zechariah, well, it's the words of Elizabeth. This is the way God works. Thus, in this manner, God has removed my disgrace. So the third one is gratitude. That no matter what comes into our lives, when a person is united to God, even in pain, there will always be peace. And dare I say that those who really have advanced in the way, even in pain, there will be joy. It's this lack of vision of patience, wisdom, and gratitude that makes us fall into so many sins because we want it done now, so we're not patient. We don't see the long-term gain. We don't see the end goal. So we don't seek wisdom and we want the immediacy and we start scrambling around among means rather than the full effect and the final cause, the final goal. And but probably most importantly, we lack gratitude. We don't really stop in our prayers to thank God in a profound way for everything that we have and everything that we are. And that that in itself is already a revelation to us and to the people around us. And so on this day, may St. Zechariah, may St. Elizabeth intercede for us 
May God be mindful of us to grant us patience, wisdom, and gratitude. May their prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from me, consistential with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down to heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, so the divine virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and as he stood at the right hand of the Father, he will come and give him glory to judge the living. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Son of Church. We confess on that. your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Poncianus. Be mindful, O God, of the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for all the members of this parish. 
Be mindful also of all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. James, the brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O servant of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters. God. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation, Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your only Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, on the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Be 
right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts all sing. Praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never ending voices and with sweet acclamations, they cry out and they proclaim. Truly, you are holy, O God, the Father, King of ages, giver of holiness. Holy is your only Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Holy is your life giving spirit, who downs into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the fate of the Lord. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandments and fell, you did not abandon us, but like your good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, and through the prophets you guided us at appointed time. from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the Holy and Ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kuri eleison, wabiyamo haudoktum hashodi lema bedhaye, en sabe lachma bida kori shoto uparahu kodesh, wakso yamen talmita koromaram, sabe hula mehne kulhun, hono denita. Fahru dila dahlo faikun wahlo sagi meta kaseyo meti heb usoyon hambe wa hoyon kailam alamin. Kanna wahalu kunsun dum zikhu min hamro u min mahayu Barahu Qadish u ya bin talmita u qadamara Samishta wa mehne kulhun honu denita Dumo dila dia tiki khadato, Dach lo fai kun wach lav sagi, Mete shedu mete heb, Usoyon haume wa hoye dan kailam alamin. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. Remember your death, your resurrection. 
resurrection, your ascension into heaven. You're sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them he descended in the form of a dove upon our Lord Jesus Christ to the Jordan River and upon the holy apostles tongues of fire Manin monio, manin monio, manin monio, ni te morra hohayo kodisho, on the hand the line of our corbono, oh no. And he may make this spread a life-giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. Mixture in this chalice, the blood of the new covenant, a life giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded upon the rock of faith, so that the gates of shale shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your son especially for Zion Jerusalem mother of all the churches remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth especially our blessed fathers Francis the Pope of Rome Bishara Peter our patriarch of Antioch Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering, but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders, and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. 
we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, <clears throat> prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, St. James the brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Pontianus, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled into heaven. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preach your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. <laughs> we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Be mindful, O God, of all earth, spiritual and earthly beings, of the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolations, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you, and you have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us, so that with pure hearts and with enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Yes, O Lord, our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We glorify and honor you, 
your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo O Lord, we bow our hands before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and in his mercy and his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, bless in the name of the Lord, the He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be the glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may become sanctified by Your holy body, and our souls purified by Your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins, and for new life, O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. God, in the land of our Lord Jesus Christ, I give it to me, the forgiveness of my sins, and for to new life. Mercy on us.
We thank you, O oh God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness <coughs> with the saints. May we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishments and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.